Alex, I've got to ask you, um, you're one of those uh, managers that when you arrived at Rangers, you maybe didn't have the money of Dick Advocat. You had to cut a few um, pounds off the budget and try and get players in there that could still replicate the success that Rangers had had. How difficult a job is it when you're a, a manager going in, trying to keep the success going, the way Michael Beale's obviously going to have to do? Yeah, um, so, so when I went in, I, I knew that I was inheriting uh, some great players, fantastic squad. And uh, but the you know, Martin O'Neill came in and at Celtic and kind of usurped Rangers a wee bit and, and I, I did a dinner with Dick Advocate last year and Dick said I, I was tired. He said, uh, you know, the Rangers and Celtic jobs like that you really take take it out of you. And uh, he says I was tired. It was time for Ali. He was doing a good job at um, Hibs and Motherwell when. And he was a new kid in the block, and uh, I, I recommended him. I, I actually went to see Dick, um, and and uh, when he was at Eindhoven, to buy the current Man United assistant. Oh, Mitchell Van der Gag. Yeah, and uh, I watched the. I said, "Can I watch your training?" And uh, so Dick maybe had that in his head when when um, you know he recommended me for Rangers to David Murray and David said that he felt I was the right man at the right time. So um, it was a case of man managing those great players. And a lot of them had, had lost a bit of confidence. Um, Celtic were doing, doing well. And, and uh, you know, I went in there and I, I kind of used my man, management skills. I had good coaches and Andy Watson and, and uh, Jan Vouters. And just a brilliant backroom staff, uh, and right away we, as I said, you know, again, I, I, I always try and keep my cup half full. They, they, you get the bad monkey saying, "What if you never beat Celtic? What if you never win a game?" And well, you know, you've not got a long shelf life and in, in that kind of job. Yeah. So they are one said, "What if you do?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all rosy in the garden, uh, and uh, then. Um, it, you know, I got the I got great shifts. Uh, Barry Ferguson was phenomenal, Rangers player, and and uh, guys at Ronald the Boer, Mikey Moles came back to forum after his operation, and uh, Arthur Newman. You know, Amaruso was out of the team, yeah. And I, and I made a call to him in Italy. He was getting in Florence for a rehab, and and uh, I says. Amo. And he says, hey boss, congratulations. That's my best Italian <laughs> attempt. And he says, uh, I look forward to working with you. I says, I need you back in this team. Because Dick had bombed him at the time. And um, got him back in and sure enough, we, we had a really good rapport and the players were buzzing again. Uh, and, and I watched some videos and I thought, what they were trying to do was walk the ball into the net. You know, the usual brilliant um, total Dutch football and get to the byline. Cut it back, tap in, tap in. Every, I says, no, we've got to play faster, get the ball forward quicker. And I just used one of the things that I've em emphasised about Alec Ferguson all my, my life was assertive tempo passing, you know, and play with tempo, and quick throw ins, everything quick. And it was, it was kind of just pearls of wisdom that I got for Sir Alex on, on the, my, my journey. Yeah, and that. Strangely enough, is the battle that Michael Beale faces now with Ange Postecoglou because his team, quick tempo, mm -hmm. high mm -hmm. press, do everything quickly. Yeah, yeah, that, that is quite in, incredible. The, the, you know, the style of Celtic, you know, they, they, they play very quickly and Postecoglou, contrary to loads of uh, managers in the game nowadays, he, I think he's picked all those players himself. Because he knows them all. Yeah. He, he knows all, all those players. I'm sure he, he, that he, some names, maybe not not so much. I know that Celtic have got a kind of uh, group throughout the world. Um, you know, team, teams, players going to Man City and some Australian teams and Celtic have got some kind of uh, commitment with these and get, maybe get them through there. But I'm absolutely convinced that Postal Coglu's picked it. Unlike um, a lot of managers in the game now, 
obviously got their team, you know, the, the computer was kids and the, 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 in terms of recruitment. Uh, and uh, and I get that because it's I mean so consuming yeah. manage, management, uh, but credit to him for doing what he's did with that team and and they're very lively and quick and athletic and it, you know at the moment that's I think that's what uh, Bailey's got to do Michael with with uh, the Rangers team and get them to that kind of tempo of of speed and stuff. What's the best advice you could give them and trying to break that stranglehold? Well, I mean, in terms of advice, probably, I mean, I don't think he's got quite the quality that I had when I arrived at Ibrox, but uh, he, he does a lot of fantastic players in there. And, but I do believe that they are loving his, his way of, of coaching and management. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of learning still going on in there. And, and maybe, you know, if they can salvage something from the season it's going to be difficult for to win the league now but if they can salvage something i.e the cup then um it kind of takes me back to my days at ibrox when um you know my first season when we couldn't win the league we won two cups yeah and, and then we were a, a full flown challenge to celtic and in, in the the next year or so. Yeah. Are you optimistic that he's got what it takes to build a team there? Because a lot of Rangers fans are hoping that he can get mm. the backing. Well, that, that's that's the key. And the key is recruitment. And, uh, you know, that Michael will, will probably have other players that he's he's looking at in his wee black book. And um, I'm sure that, you know, he'll be doing everything they can to get some of these But as you know, uh, it can be a lot of money to, to buy certain players back in the day when Dick uh, bought a lot of the, brought a lot of the Dutch players in and there was a, a lot of foreign players coming for big money and, and at, at that time then um, that's maybe not quite in the, the budgets just now but they, they certainly he'll know a player I'm sure that if he knows if he, if he believes that he can enhance the team then uh, I think Michael's got that ability and um, having already said that they, they, I'm hearing good things from you know the players and he's in the way that he works. Yeah, um, just one little final um, thought from you, um, Mikel Arteta, how, please, yeah. how pleasing would it be for you having one of your old players guide Arsenal to the title? God. Uh, Amazing. I mean, I never. I mean, he was just a kid when he came, and he was on the radar. Uh, and I, I didn't scout him. Um, David Money, Sir David said, "We've got a player pending, and um, he would cost six million from Barcelona." Dick's got his eye on him. Uh, Dick had his eye on him. Um, he's, he's there if if you want, um, but we'll probably need to sell somebody. You know. Uh, to try and balance the books a, a little bit, and um, I, I said, "Look, I've never heard them. He's a kid. I, I would. I knew all the other worldwide players. You know, I was pretty, pretty decent with my knowledge of those. And I said, I'll send Andy Watson to see him. And Andy said they went. So he played at number six for um, PSG on loan. And but as you know, in, in the kind of continent at that time. It was slow build up, yeah. And he was at the back taking the ball, and and Andy says, "Look, nobody really would near him, you know." And he, he's got great feet. He's quite, he's quite quick, you know. He's rapid, but I already had a number six, yeah, Ferguson. And what a number six! Oh, I know, <laughs> one of the best ever. And, and um, but I thought, right, if it's in the, the if he's, he's in the the balance in terms of the. The, the club going to pay this money for him, take him because yeah. um, if he becomes a legend, we'll get slaughtered, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, you know, I, I got Michael into the team and moved him into midfield because he was quick, he had quick feet and he interacted with the Boar and uh, Arvaladze and all these Canidia, you know, players. He was, he was a lovely player, and and of course, when he goes into a team of that level, then those guys would help him and protect him as well yeah and of course you know it led to the 
end of the season with him flapping his <laughs> his his hands when we won the, the league. And uh, to see what you, you know, and you probably your next question is, um, did you think you'd become a tremendous manager? And you know, at that age, you know, you, you don't know, but I knew he was a good kid and he, he cared about the game and he was very knowledgeable. Yeah. And to see what he's done nowadays is fantastic. Although um, somebody gave me the wrong number for him. <laughs> Come on, Michael, get me your number. I was just about to say, do you think you can do it? Every week, as every week passes, I kind of um, think, no, he'll, he'll get, they'll get caught, they'll get caught, and uh, then the wee seed of doubt creeps into my mind, and I th God, it's looking possible. Yeah, it's looking possible and po probable. So phenomenal. Well done, Michael. Taught you everything you know. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, he does do it. Aye. Absolutely magnificent. Aye. Brilliant, son. Thanks, Peter. Top man.